Sup, this is my goals, revision one, update two. So let's get to it. Guess what I'll do is just go in and start with the uh, Yai Sakuras. I'll go and start with Dark Bow Jonin. Uh, I went ahead and decided to craft the uh, pre-arm for Dark Bow Jonin. Uh, the way this came about was I had about 8K weapon resonance and I decided to use 4K of that to get the Isopilium. Now, I chose to get the Isopilium because prior I had already acquired the, I guess, the Mag Storm or whatever the base version of Mag Typhoon is. I acquired that when I came back to the game a few months ago as a returnee, like bonus, uh, like bonus reward. So I didn't want to pull uh, that base uh, weapon of the mag before, like again. So I just went with Isopilium, mainly because I had at the time, I had an interest in trying to, you know, work towards Grusense and Memento. So I used the Isopilium to uh, allow me to get to the mag typhoon. And then I just, you know, got it to level 50. Um, another reason why I decided to uh, make the pre-arm for Dark Ball Jones because I saw the trend of what they were doing with the other, with some of the other SP characters, such as Starlet Astrologist, as well as Haxor Bunny, is where they were making their ultimates allow to buff their, their respective damage type. And they were able to cast their ultimates and their QTs from the background. Well, although Dark Bolt Jonin cannot cast her skills from the background, such as Ultimate and QTE, her ultimate provides a buff called Terrig's Impulse, where it increases, where it makes the enemy hit take 40% more lightning damage for 12 seconds. That's very close to what, you know, Star Wars Astrologer's ultimate does, as well as Haxor Boni ultimate does. Her QTE, though, doesn't provide any types of buffs. The QT, it just does damage. And like I mentioned before, these, her QTE as well as her uh, ultimate cannot be cast in the background while allowing the current Valkyrie to stay on the field. So my hope was, is that someday Mihoyo will make Dark Bro Jonin behave that way. And so that was another reason why I decided to just go ahead and give her a pre-arm. Also, too, another reason why I decided to go ahead and give her a pre-arm is because I'm currently using Dark Bowl Droning on my Lightning Damage teams, mainly for her leader skill. Her leader skill provides, oops, her leader skill provides 30% bonus Lightning Damage as well as 15% bonus total damage. So, you know, that's because she's sitting at triple S. So for those, for those reasons I mentioned, um, one, just deciding to give her a pre-arm. Two, the fact that she behaves like the other SP characters are able to buff their respective damage types. And three, because she's triple S and I use her for a leader skill, I just decided to go ahead and give her a pre-arm. Um, the other Yai Sakura that I wanted to talk about is Flames Lakatama. And I decided to go ahead and give her a Runa Sakura mainly because out of aesthetics and because I have a little bit of an OCD convention of wanting to keep her in parallel to what I was doing with the Dark Bow Jonin guy secure. So how this came about was, is that since I decided to go ahead and get the Isopilium, I didn't want to use the other remaining weapon resonance to get the Demon Blade for secure again. I had pulled or had got Demon Blade Force Sakura from drops past, but I just ended up salvaging it and, you know, or converting it to weapon resonance. So what I ended up doing was just forging it from the, you know, weapon forging system. And so, again, just out of OCD convention, as well as I like the Ruin of Sakura weapon name better, I decided to just go and give her a pre-arm. So moving on to Yamabuki armor, I think I've already mentioned how I got her to triple S. Also too, while I was making drops, I was fortunate enough to get the Charlemagne M middle stigmata piece. So I was able to complete this beginner gotcha stigmata set. So that was pretty cool. Uh, moving on to Kriegsmesser. Uh, I decided just to go with blood dance for Kriegsmesser, uh, mainly because I had acquired Hamranger in the past 
And so I didn't want to, uh, you know, use any weapon resonance to get, um, to get Harunga again. So I just ended up picking up Blood Dance from the exchange shop when I saw it. Also too, uh, I kind of given up on trying to use Kriegsmesser for her ice damage. And so far in all the situations where I tried to use it for her ice damage, it's just not been too impressive. And I don't have a specific ice stigmata set, gotcha stigmata set to put on her. And even when I did the crafted stigmata sets, they still weren't that impressive. So because her ice damage just doesn't seem good enough to beat end game bosses, uh, end game boss content, I figured Blood Dance would be more suitable because I'll be using her mainly in a buff capacity. And even in that regard, I haven't really used her in any teams yet. I've always, I've always used someone else. So, you know, I, I just decided to pass on getting her run gear. Also, too, my idea is that if they ever should make a pre-arm for Kriegsmesser, it will be using the base of Harungir to get to that pre-arm. And so since I acquired Harungir in the past, my logic is I can use any greatsword weapon in order to get to the Harungir pre-arm. So I decided just to go with Blood Dance and leave Kriegs must, Kriegs must are there. I'll just go ahead and jump over to Umbu Rose. Uh, with Umbu Rose, um, I currently have three, I'm sorry, I currently have two out of three Stigmata pieces. And um, like I mentioned, I'm making supply drops and, or if I didn't mention that, I have been making supply drops, unfortunately, spending my very scarce or very valuable near priceless crystals. Uh, so I compromised there uh, again, unfortunately, to try to expedite it. You know, I've been trying to wait out and the longer I try to wait to acquire the pieces, the more impatient I become. So I've been making supply drops and any stigmata pieces that I didn't intend to keep, I just salvaged it for stigmata resonance. So that helped to expedite me getting the wild bottom piece. So I'm trying to continue to, you know, push ahead to get the wild M stigmata piece in a similar fashion. Um, so what I basically, what I do is, is that whenever there's a supply drop that comes around that features the wild stigmata set, I just go ahead and make drops and hoping that I will get the missing stigmata piece that I would need. And if not, hopefully I'll get stigmata pieces that I can salvage. So far, you know, uh, in my recent efforts to make supply drops, I managed to get another stigmata piece that I could salvage. So that gave me an extra thousand. I had about 800 from saving, just from doing the, you know, adventure task. So I got an extra thousand from salvaging a stigmata piece. So that was pretty cool. So that's basically Umbu Rose. Uh, what I'll be doing now is moving on to the uh, Fuhas. Uh, as far as the uh, Fuhas are concerned, <clears throat> I go to Night Squire. Uh, with Night Squire, I managed to get the middle Schroeder Band M Stigmata piece. So I may have mentioned that before, but I got the complete set for that now. Um, moving on to uh, Shadow Knight. <clears throat> I'm still plugging away, trying to get Shadow Knight to Triple S, taking advantage of any opportunities that present itself. And speaking of that, um, these events that have come along, the Threshold Breach, as well as the Stand Wars, their supply shops offer <clears throat> these frag Valkyrie Fragrium S that contain Shadow Knight fragments. So as I do those events and gain their respective event currency, I'll be going to their respective shops and buying out all those Valkyrie Fragrium S's and making sure I choose the Shadow Knight fragments. Also too, I heard or from watching, you know, news about uh, upcoming updates to the game in 4.9, uh, they're supposed to be adding um, Shadow Knight to the War Treasury. 
for ancient legacy as well as ancient willpower. So when that becomes available, I will definitely be, you know, purchasing up any more Shadow Knight fragments that I need to get her to triple S. So that's Shadow Knight. We're moving on to Phoenix. The Phoenix, they came up with Fang Wan Down, which they later in 4.8 allowed to be able to take and be able to be upgraded or converted or forged into a pre-arm. So I managed to be able to get that forged into a pre-arm and just today fully upgraded it to level 65. This is, I'm very excited about this because now I'll be able to use Phoenix in a more high DPS capacity for, you know, uh, end game bosses content that require a uh, high DPS threshold. Also too, I have the second piece of the Sigmata set for the fire damage of the bringer of light. So I managed to get the A fixes for that with stats that are useful for fire damage and useful for Phoenix. So I'm just waiting for the stigmata, the event stigmatum bottom piece to become available. <clears throat> Part of the bringer of light is currently not available yet. I thought I saw something mentioned on the Facebook page for Honkai Impact the Third or on their official website, but apparently I was incorrect because I haven't seen it in any of the shops. So that's basically Phoenix. Moving on to Hersher of Sentience. Uh, you know, it's still my long-term goal to get her to triple S. Also, too, uh, for Stigmata pieces, um, I'm currently working on getting the Durak bottom Stigmata piece in order to complete at least her recommended DPS set. And I guess a little bit of insider history behind that. You know, when I first came back to the game those months ago, I, my only focus was trying to get Shadow Knight to where I wanted her to be. So all I needed was Durac M. So any remaining Fallen Crystallum that I had, I just ended up converting it down to the original Crystallum and just used that to get uh, Focus Supply cards. So after I did that, and then, you know, later turning my attention to Hersh of Sentience, and then learning what would be best in order for the DPS after trying some things I thought would work out well and finding out that they didn't, I realized that I needed to get direct bottom. You know, uh, I tried to, you know, I purchased another night BP season, hoping that I could take the fiery crystalum and it could convert that down to enough fallen crystalum. But because the Durac piece costed 10 fallen crystalum and the max that you can convert down to fallen crystalum from fiery crystalum was eight. I was not able to get it from the Elite Workshop. I tried talking to Mihoyo to see if there's anything they could do to help me out. And unfortunately, they decided not to do anything. And I guess that should have been expected. So I've been plugging away, working on getting uh, direct bottom through the forging system. Before the 4.8 update, what I did was I started gathering the Michelangelo bottom stigmata ghost. And so, and I got a whole bunch of the spatial lenses. And so what I was able to do was get up 160 spatial lenses. I had about 300 or so ether fuel, and I had the 40 uh, Michelangelo bottom ghost. So when the 4.8 update hit, I got fully reimbursed, which allowed me to have enough G2 material. I already had the spatial lens and they gave me some extra ether fuel in order to get me to 900 anything else that i had extra that i didn't need i just used that to convert like any extra of these crystallite that i didn't need i just used that and converted it to ether fuel so that allowed me to force the michelangelo bottom after i forced the michelangelo bottom i started gathering the resources for the uh direct bottom piece and I had already started doing that again before the point update. So I had like about five or maybe 10 pieces of direct bottom ghost. So when the update hit again, I got fully reimbursed for those. And then I've just been plugging away doing the universal mirage. So now that I have the Michelangelo bottom, I'm only 10 away from having 140 of these Chasmic Gary Crystal Light, which is G3 material. I still need about 900 ether fuel. And if you look in the upper right, you'll see I have 686. So I need about 214 more ether fuel. So I have to keep plugging away at this universal mirage in order to get the resources I need. I already did the universal mirage for today. 
So I have Saturday and fr uh, Saturday and Sunday left. I currently have 220 time soil passes. So any asteroid that I get, I'll be putting towards buying the time structures. So this way I can buy 80 more of these time soil passes. You know, you get the time structures from the asteroid shop. They cost 370 each. And then from the activity shop, you get the time, time swirl passes. They cost 12 of these time structures. Uh, I may have mixed names there. Hopefully you'll know, be smart enough to know where I mixed it up if I did. Uh, uh, uh. So going back to the Universal Mirage, the way this works is that you know, every every day you get, well, I don't know how it works, but you get one, and then on, what does it say, Fridays and Sundays, you get two. So I already got two for Friday, and I already used those, so Saturday I'll get one more, and then Sunday I will get another two. So I need to have enough time soul passes, so I need 300 time soul passes in order to be able to take advantage of each time I'll be able to do a Universal Mirage, Universal Mirage Floor 6 Blood Grave, Blade Grave. So I have to try to hustle for the asteroid there. Um, and so that, I guess that brings me back to Hirsch of Sentience. And so that's when I'll be able to complete it either hopefully by the end of this week, and if not by the end of this week, early next week. I'll be able to complete getting the stigmata piece, the direct bottom uh, stigmata piece for Hersher of Sentience. And that basically covers all of the uh, Valkyries. Let's see how much time I have, 17, I'm already 17 minutes in. Um, I guess what I would like to do is a little bit of discussion now that I covered that. Uh, like I mentioned, I was doing supply drops. Um, you know, one of the, there are a few reasons why, other reasons why I've been wanting to do supply drops. Like I said, I was pretty unfortunate and only getting a whole bunch of, uh, not getting enough Sigma pieces. I've been getting a lot of weapons and I've been kind of okay with getting the weapons because I'm working towards the uh, achievement of getting 200 weapons. I'm at currently at 99%. So, so long as I'm getting weapons that move me towards completing that achievement, you know, I guess I'm willing to be content. And this is also due part of the reason why when I had the option to choose weapons from the exchange shop, I decided to go ahead and get weapons that I did not currently own, which is part of the reason why I got the Ice Apelium as well as the Blood Dance, because that would also too help to push me towards, you know, getting the achievement for 200 weapons which was also part of the reason why I decided to upgrade those blade weapons to pre-arms because those count as a weapon I don't own, therefore pushing me towards the achievement for the weapons. Also too, in terms of the crystals that I'm spending, um, I'm currently, when I go to recharge, I've been uh, purchasing these monthly packs. As you can see, when I try to buy, I have 180 days left. So my logic is each one of these monthly packs, provided you are able to log in and play throughout the entirety of the month, you will get 2,600 crystals at the end of the month. So I feel like I can recoup the crystals that I've been spending to make drops. And so, you know, it's like, okay, as long as I have the means, as long as I'm willing to buy these monthly packs, which is the best bang for your buck, I feel like I can recoup, you know, the crystals that I'm spending right now. Also, too, like I mentioned, because uh, Shadow Knight will be appearing in the War Treasury later on, I feel like the crystals that I would have been trying to spend to get Shadow Knight to Triple S, I now no longer have to. And so that kind of the crystals I would have been spending on drops, I now feel free, like for Shadow Knight, for expansion supply drops for Shadow Knight, I feel like, okay, I'm just trading Shadow Knight for supply drops to help get Stigmata pieces. Um, also too, uh, because I'm able to recoup the crystals, I feel like, you know, again, if I continue to purchase those monthly packs, I feel like the crystals I'm spending now will still allow me to be able to, and within a reasonable time frame, 
still get Hershey sentenced to triple S. Kind of very close to what my initial expectation was, which was like sometime next year, maybe. So I will still be able to do so, so long as I continue to get these uh, monthly crystal packs. Um, uh, the other thing that I wanted to discuss about was uh, the equipment. Um, when I was making supply drops, I did manage to get Isaac Newton bottom. And, you know, I've just been salvaging a lot of Stigmata pieces, a lot of pretty good ones. I picked up a Dante piece. I picked up some other pieces as well. So I picked up an Anna Shurak piece and I've just been uh, salvaging it for the Stigmata residents. Um, but when I came across uh, Isaac Newton bottom, you know, I watched a lot of videos of people be beating Memorial Boss, Memor Memorial Arena bosses. And a lot of their support characters had Isaac Newton bottom. So I became aware of the potency of the Stigmata piece. So when I ran across it, I decided to not salvage it immediately. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, I still have it unlocked because I still want to allow myself the option to salvage it. But also too, through experience and you know the school of hard knocks, I've learned the hard way that there are some things I should not salvage. So I decided to go ahead and use Isaac Newton bottom. And what I've discovered is that, you know, in the, in the Stigmata sets that I currently own, when I'm going to play in a group, it's like, I don't, I don't send, because I don't have the Valkyries that are designed to put out the good gobs of damage, along with their Stigmata pieces, you know, of that recent wave of Valkyries and their Stigmata pieces, again, allows them to do good gobs of damage. Even though the Valkyries I have are good, they're not, they don't meet the DPS requirements for these group boss activities. And so what I've come to learn is by putting in Isaac Newton bottom for some of those Stigmata sets, especially for the Monet, I could just swap out the bottom with Isaac Newton bottom. It's allowed me, not only has it given me more damage, but also too, when I go into a group setting, because my damage is on subpar, it allows me, not only does it give me a little bit of extra boost, but also to boost the damage of the people I'm playing with, therefore allowing me to be able to play with others and still be in-game boss group content. So because this Stigmata piece by itself has allowed me to participate and help defeat in-game group boss content, that's the main reason why I'm holding on to it. And even in some solo boss content, solo in-game boss content, it still gives me a better boost over, let's say, Monet Bottom, or in the case of Hirsch of Sentience, since I don't have a better bottom, it allows me to use that in its stead, which also too allows me to use distinct Stigmata pieces for Memorial Arena bosses, where, your, where the Stigmata pieces or the equipment pieces used get locked to the Memorial Arena boss. So that's what's going on with Isaac Newton Bottom. Um, I guess if I go to the weapons, um, the only weapons that I'm considering or I plan to upgrade to like fully upgrade to level 65 pre arms are the fist weapons, mainly because my favorite characters in this game is, uh, are the Fuha characters. So, you know, that's what's, you know, that's what's going on, on with them. Uh, I guess the last thing that. I wanted to uh, discuss, uh, I guess, separate from the game is, you know, I haven't really made videos uh, recently or in a little bit, uh, mainly because there's been a lot of stuff going on, you know, in my life. So I've been any free time that I've had, I've just been uh, taking that time to, you know, to myself for personal time. And so now I've come to a place where there's a somewhat of a respite to everything that's been going on in my life to where I feel like I can sit down and make these videos. Uh, even if that respite has come, <laughs> uh, let's say involuntarily. Um, and I guess that's, you know, pretty much it for all the things that I wanted to discuss. So I guess all in all, I'm almost done. I'm almost done.
all my Valkyries have equipment. Almost all my Valkyries equipment are complete. And once that happens, I'll be able to move on to the next thing.